Welcome back to the rudder and welcome aboard Antoinette. We are finally out on the water for once after a little bit of time and we're here to talk about power. So when we're talking about power, we're talking about batteries and how long you can stay out overnight. And there's three things you can do. You can get bigger batteries, allows more storage and you can stay out longer. You can use less power while you're out. So what are your systems using? How much power do they use? So I'm going to go through all the, all the lights and systems on uh, Antoinette and see how much power they draw. And the third thing is, can you generate power? So in a few videos ago, uh, I put up a 175 watt solar panel. I registered how much power we, we pulled up last night at about 5.30 in the afternoon. So we had 100% power, our batteries were all full after motoring here. And then we've just had a night out and we can have a look using the Victron battery monitor, how much power we used overnight. And depending on the day, we can see how much power we regenerate back into the boat. All right, so let's get started and have a look at storage. So we're down here in the lazarette. It feels like uh, nearly every second video we end up down here in the lazarette. Uh, and, but we're here looking at our batteries. So I'll just turn the video over. So on Antoinette, I've changed the batteries. This is our starting battery. So when we're talking about power, that's probably the one you're most concerned with. And this big beast of a thing is a 330 amp hour battery. So that is our house battery. So when we're talking about power, probably the biggest thing to worry about is you need power to start your engines. We don't use the starter battery for anything else but starting a motor. There's one of the things I'm, I don't love about um, the Genoa 895. The starter battery and the house battery are actually called the port and starboard batteries. And when you have a look at the uh, switching in there, they actually start the port and starboard motors. They're wired directly to the motors. And that means that your house battery is technically starting a motor. You can link them and I can show you how to do that with this switch just here. This is a 330 amp hour AGM battery and they don't like starting motors. So I have to link it every time. But I can isolate the starboard battery, which is what I do with this switch just there. So that means I'm always ready to start the motors. This is the starboard accessories. And accessories means home. So you can see that starts the starboard side battery. And there's our port side isolated. There's just no way to discharge the port side battery. So that's my starter battery. That's my emergency. And this is to link them together. So this is how I start the starboard side battery is I push that in, turn it on. Uh, so it links the port side and starboard batteries together to one big battery bank. So I'm not damaging the AGM battery. So a 330 amp hour battery is a beast. It weighs an awful lot. Um, it weighs about 87 kilos, I think. But it is an AGM battery. So you'd think you'd have 330 amp hours to play with, but you don't. Uh, an AGM battery shouldn't be discharged past 50%. So we have 165 amp hours of amp hours to play with to power the boat. But that is plenty considering uh, what we've got aboard. Out of the lazarette, back on deck on Antoinette, 330 amp hours is our storage. Now it really depends on how much we use on board. The less we can use, the longer our battery lasts. A while ago, you saw I put in a Victron battery monitor, which, we can, which I can use to monitor how much battery we're using. So what I'm gonna do is go around Antoinette and check how much battery we are using. The sun's going down. So we're getting no solar power into the boat. This is a test of everything, all the electronics that we use while we're at anchor and how much ampage they draw. And just remember that for every amp they draw, if you use it for an hour, that's an amp hour. So we have 165 amp hours to use. So every amp hour we use takes a little bit out of our batteries. So let's go through everything. You can see that we draw about, there's a phantom draw it's called, of about one amp, 0.1 of an amp. That's just the electronics that keep themselves, uh, how they keep themselves alive during the time. So the first thing out in the cockpit is we'll turn on this LED light and you can see LED light only draws about 
one of an amp. It really doesn't use that much. So have that on all night if you want. Moving into the saloon, we've got one light switch here, which turns on quite a lot of lights and takes us up to 0.8 of an amp. We've got some three lights here and then there's LEDs all around the floor, which we'll show one day in a video of what it looks like at night. But this light is on quite a lot at night, obviously. So it does take a little bit, but LEDs really do minimize your draw. Probably, oh, watch out, Molly. The fridge is your main amp drawage. So at the moment, the fridge is off and I'm just going to turn it on now. And as you can see, it jumps straight up to two and a half, three amps. So your fridge, while it's on, estimated at three amps. So that's three amp hours. So for every hour that your fridge is on, if you're asleep for nine or 10 hours overnight, that's 30 amp hours you're going to take out. So that is one of your biggest energy expenditures. But this is quite a good fridge and I do set it at the second setting. So it does spend a bit of its night off. And I'll just turn that off now and you can see what that does. So moving into the cock into the driver's position, all our switches, probably the main switch that is going to be on all night is the anchor light. Once again, an LED light does not take much draw, you know, 0.2 of an amp or so. So that is your main, you know, overnight, that'll be the one that is on. All your other switches, we don't really have to worry about. You can see one of the good things is our fresh water pump doesn't take that much energy. Something that you might be wanting to use is your stereo. So as you turn that on, and I'll just turn it down a bit, and it uses about half an amp, which is not too bad, very effective very energy efficient. We'll turn that off. So one of the things that we have on all night is the Garmin. So we've got our anchor circle out. You can see we've only just pulled up here. So this is a piece, this is a piece of electronics that is on all night. So it really um, depends what our drawer is. And you can see at the moment, it draws about one amp. But something I will show you is that if you go into the settings and into the display, you can see as we draw the backlight down, the ampage actually changes quite a bit. So overnight, if you want, you can leave it down. You will have to make sure that you bring it up before the sun comes up because it's really hard to see that screen. But you can leave it down. You can leave it on auto, but it really doesn't change that much. So let's leave it back on auto, back, do that. And I'll turn that off. For now so we can just get a reading of everything on the boat so down here we have down here we have the outside lights so these lights are some cockpit lights and the underwater lights at the back of the boat so they use a little bit of draw but not too bad but it all adds up so moving downstairs we have our mid cab the mid cab doesn't have too many lights, it's just got one light, and you've seen that before in some of the other videos, but it does actually chew a little bit. It's up to 1.2 amps. So keeping the mid cab on if you've got kids really will chew up some of your power. You also have, I'll turn that off, and you can see a reading light, little reading light, you can barely register doesn't take too much at all out of your ampage. It is one of those LED lights again. And into the master bedroom. So moving into the master suite, we have two light switches. One of them just provides some overhead lights, two overhead lights, only 0.1 of an amp. You can leave those on the whole time. The other light switch does have quite a bit more lighting. You've got LED strip there, some LED strips under there some more lighting <clears throat> and that uses about 1.4 amps so if you're leaving that on for an extended period of time that is quite an ampage draw the only other one we have is another led reading light and barely registers 
and I'm sitting on the puppy. Something else that we have in uh, Antoinette, which is really energy efficient, is some fans. Now just turn the fan on. That's on high and it's drawing 0.2 of an amp. So even with two fans, you can leave them on all night and you're, you're barely drawing three or four amp hours. Very energy efficient. And that's how you add up everything. So everything comes together to add up and draw in those, those, that energy. And in the head, hopefully you're not in here for too many hours. So the head is about oh, point, point 0.7 of an amp. Bounces around a little bit depending on what's on. So you turn that off and you can see it drop down. So the last thing we're going to do, watch out Molly, is we're going to pretend like we're out at night. So we'll turn the Garmin on, we'll turn our anchor light on. Molly, watch out. We'll turn the fridge on. We'll turn some lights on. And you can see everything jumping up. So on a typical night with those things running, that's not too extravagant. We haven't got the stereo on. We're using about five amp hours. So you know, while from when the sun goes down, which it's about to go down soon, you know, we're going to be using five amp hours for the next three or four hours. It all adds up. So let's touch base in the morning and see what we've, how many amp hours we've used. And then we're at anchor till tomorrow, hopefully to the afternoon. We can see when the solar kicks in and how much energy we can regain back into the system. Morning, I've just woken up as you can probably tell and just gone for a quick walk and the sun is up as you can see but it's still not on the solar panel yet so just before uh, the sun gets onto those panels and starts generating some power uh, you'll just have a look and we just used a little bit under 40 amp hours so I think it's 38 amp hours at the minute I do know in the bit that I took just a second ago the fridge was actually off so that's a good sign that the fridge does go on and off all night, so you're not using those three amps the whole night. The Garmin's been on all night, the anchor light's been on all night. So yeah, that's what a general night uses, I find, about you know, about 40 to 50 amp hours, depending on what you get up to and how long the night is. Uh, so we're just waiting for the sun to come up a little bit higher. Even though the sun is up, it does need to actually shine onto those panels, so it does need to be a little bit higher in the sky than it is right now. So let's wait till that happens and I can show you how much generation power we get and then hopefully before we head home today we'll see how much if we can bring these batteries almost back to a hundred percent. Okay. So you can see we're getting about six amps of into the system now so for every hour that's six amp hours we take off that number there so yeah, we've got 36 amp hours used so six hours like that and we're back to a hundred percent. It's just after lunchtime and we're going to head in. The weather is coming in a little bit, although it's, I can see the sun shining right behind me at the minute. And you can see on the Victron app that about six amps is going into the battery right now. And remember, we've still got the Garmin on, I've still got the fridge running. So around about nine or 10 amps are going into the battery at the moment. There has been a bit of cloud cover through the day, uh, through the morning. So I haven't put in quite as much battery, quite as much charge as I'd hoped. But you can see it is bringing down the state of charge over time and by the end of the day we'd get pretty close to coming back to a hundred percent state of charge and just remember also that the mppt is controlling the charge so the closer it gets to a hundred percent it starts going to float charge rather than to bulk charge so it'll actually limit the amount of ampage going into the battery so that's the last step in our power tour of antoinette so just recapping, you can, you know, battery is the number one thing. The bigger the battery, the more you can storage and the more nights you can stay out. Checking on all your devices, if anything's leaking ampage or if it takes in a lot of ampage and you didn't know about it, take a, have a look at that. And um, the Victron battery monitor is certainly one way to really look at all your devices and see what is sucking the power. And lastly, if you have the opportunity to 
put some more power into your batteries. Of course you could start your engines and usually on a day we would drive to another anchorage so that would bolster the batteries back up. We also have a generator, I didn't talk about it, a um, portable generator but we don't really use that anymore because we've got the lovely solar up there which just slowly trickles power into our batteries. So that's it for the power tour of Antoinette. I hope you enjoyed it. If you have any questions, uh, leave them in the comments down below. And until next time, please like and subscribe.